Hi everyone and welcome back to Ben's Kitchen uh, and for the final episode of the Valentine's Day specials I'm making chocolate lava cakes with a raspberry white chocolate ganache filling um, and so the first step is making the ganache and so here I have four ounces by weight of white chocolate and here I have an ounce by weight of heavy cream that I've heated uh, to basically a boil and so I'm just going to pour that over there all the way on that and use this to kind of stir it just to make sure everything is kind of all in there and good nicey nice all right so that just has to sit for a little bit and next i will show you what i'm going to do with this all right so in here we have freeze-dried raspberries uh 20 ounces or sorry 20 grams by weight um, and that's about three quarters cup if you're doing it that way. Um, and so now we're just gonna pulverize these into a fine powder. And so... Sorry if that's loud. Uh, it's actually not that loud right now. Yeah, going. There's a little bit of chunks in there. That's okay. It's not really like where I have fine dining restaurant or anything. So that's like pretty good I would say Ooh, look at that I don't know if you can see you can, yeah wow so pretty okay anyways I take that off Ooh. Ooh, smells like raspberries and so now we have something that looks like that which has all of the seeds in it and that's fine we're just gonna leave those in um, it will kind of give it a nice little texture and so before I add this into the ganache, I have to let that um, cool for, or not cool, uh, like set like that for probably another three minutes. And also I'll be adding a half a tablespoon of this raspberry liqueur, which you may recognize from the previous episode, not the exact previous episode, I think two episodes ago, of the homemade gin and gin and tonic recipe. So I'm using it twice because I bought it and I want to use it. And it's delicious. All right, I'll show you once it's already come together. So it's been about three minutes, and as you can see, this is all smooth now. Um, and so yeah, I, that can just like mix together like that. And so first, I'm gonna add in the raspberry, uh, freeze dried raspberry powder, I guess you want to call it. Um, don't want to mix any of that. Don't want to miss any of that. I'm just gonna mix that in. Hopefully this works fine. I've actually never done this before, so we'll see. Um, I'm sure it'll be like a nice little mass like this for a little bit. Think about mixing. I don't know if you can see that. It's a nice little color. It's like kind of muted a little bit because this is all natural coloring, folks. Nothing fake here. And then gonna add in, using the other side of this, the half tablespoon of the raspberry liqueur. That's gonna go right in, and now like that. All this good stuff, yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. I'm just gonna mix that all in. Mixy mix, nice, nice, nice. Nice, 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 nice. And so, there is our beautiful red ganache. I mean, come on, look at that. Who wouldn't want to eat that? That's, oh, oh my God, it smells so good. I'm, I've literally never made this before, so I'm really excited. All right, and so this, I'm just gonna chill, and it needs to chill for at least an hour so it becomes solid. And once that's done chilling, we'll use it, we'll put in little balls, and we'll use it to fill the chocolate lava cakes that we'll make later. Hi, uh, so the ganache is chilling, and while that chills, we're gonna make the basically the cake recipe. So here I have five ounces by weight of dark chocolate. Um, the recipe is from Bon Appetit. It calls for bittersweet chocolate, um, but here I use a mix of semi-sweet and bittersweet. It kind of depends on your level of like cakeness that you like, if you like dark chocolate or not. And so I'm just gonna chop these into small pieces. Um, and once that's all done, we will mix this and heat it with, uh, let's 
see. We'll heat it with six tablespoons of unsalted butter. You can use salted if you want, but if you're gonna be baking a lot, then I recommend getting unsalted butter just because you can control the salt. Um, people in my household disagree with that, but it's what I stand by. So in here I have the five ounces of cut up chocolate and the six tablespoons of unsalted butter. So now I'm just gonna microwave all of this uh, in 30 second increments until it's fully melted. And I won't do it more and I'll just stir it to make sure all the heat is evenly distributed in it. Um, and you can do this like with on the stove top with a bowl and and some water that's like simmering water, but I choose to do the microwave method because it's easier and more people are likely to do it. So you can follow along at home easier. All right, so it took one minute in the microwave total and it's all smooth. And so now I'm gonna set this aside out of the frame, I'm pretty sure. And I'm gonna start on the next bit here. So I have a stand mixer. If you don't have one of these, um, get one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, do, they're great. But if you have like an electric hand mixer, that will work too. Um, or even just a whisk, you can do it with that. It'll just take a little more work. And so I have three eggs, large eggs, and then also in this will be a third of a cup of brown sugar, which I forgot to get ready. So I will do that in the next take. All right, so I have the brown sugar ready. It's a third of a cup of brown sugar, um, light brown sugar, and a uh, half a teaspoon of kosher salt. So that's gonna go right in. Yum, yum. And then three eggs. And always crack these on a flat surface. If you do it on the edge like this that you see a lot of people doing, actually break the shell into it and then the shell will come out more easily. So you always wanna do it on a flat surface. Put those right away. Oh yeah, fancy one-handed egg break. I know it's kind of messy on the counter. I'll clean that up later. There's not much you can really do about that. If you want to not make a messy counter, you can actually do this on a plate too. Um, that's a smart move to do uh, if you think about it beforehand when you're filming a cooking show. But I didn't think to do that, so oh well. And then into this also is one teaspoon, that looks about right, of vanilla extract. Um, yeah, so now just gonna beat this for about four minutes until it's about as light and fluffy as you can get. So I'll show you what that looks like when it's done. All right, so as you can see, it has whipped up a lot, and so it's got a lot of air in it. And so the next step is to fold in the chocolate and the flour. And so that will be all that goes into it besides the ganache filling. So before I add in the chocolate or anything like that, I'm gonna prepare the uh, ramekins. And just a little note on these, these are six ounce ramekins. Um, I got these at New Seasons for 250 each. And the recipe actually makes four. Um, you can have it, but it's a little bit hard with the amounts that you put in, like three eggs, one and a half eggs is kind of hard to do. And so, uh, but I just have two, and so I'll make a, I'll make a batch again after these are done. And so yeah, what you first you gotta do is you gotta butter it. And so just some melted or softened butter. Um, softened is usually better because it's, it goes around easier um, and it provides a little bit thicker of a coat. And then my favorite thing to do with this, which is also from the Bon Appetit test kitchen, is the mirror sugar or raw sugar. And just do that and then Basically just run it around all of the sides until there's a very even coating. And then just tap out the excess. And you have something that looks like that. And so that will make a nice crunchy exterior and a nice uh, gooey interior. And now I will fold in the chocolate. And so I'm just gonna pour all of that in here. And then, cause I don't really want to knock out much of these air bubbles, I'm gonna try my best just to fold in the chocolate. Also, look at my awesome spatula, Harry Potter spatula, I got for Christmas. Super cool. Um, yeah, get all that in. Put that back here, and then 
just folding around. So it's like slice through and then fold, slice and fold. I'm just gonna do this as best as I can. Um, it's kind of hard. And it's not as important to do it with this as other things, like if you're making a souffle or something. If you're making a souffle, you wanna be really careful. Um, but yeah, I'll just show you once this is all, all comes together, what it looks like. So the final ingredient in the cake is three tablespoons of all-purpose flour. Um, yeah, there's not really much more to say on that. Everyone should know what all-purpose flour is if you do anything like this. Um, so, yeah, I'm just gonna kind of get that evenly distributed on the top a little bit and then do my best to gently fold it in. We'll call it, and so now, three quarter, or not three quarters, about a third of a cup of batter goes right on in. Right back in there. Just drop that guy right in there and then cover that back up with about another little bit. Just shake that so it's even. Put it over here off camera on a tray. Do the same dealio with this guy here. Third of a cup. Ganache center. Nicey nice. Another third of a cup. And there you are. So you want it basically coming to that small ring on the inside. So there's like a little lip here, as you can see on the outside. You want it just to come to the bottom of that. And so that's going on this just to make it easier. And I will show you when I put it in the oven, I guess, right now, because my camera lady is doing an awesome job. So oven, 425, and these are gonna bake for, I think, 12 to 15 minutes. I will double check, and I'll tell you once I look at the recipe again. Here we go. All right. All right, so it's been 13 minutes, and they're now ready to come out. And the recipe said 13 to 15 minutes, just in case you're wondering. So now I'm just gonna let these cool for just 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna do a knife around the edge and invert it on to these nice plates here. And then I will pop and I'll cut into one so you can see it ooze. All right, so I'm just gonna do the first one here, which is the one with the sugar around the edge. I'm just gonna make sure that's all good. Hot. And now, uh, let's do this. That is the question. I think I'm going to put this on top. And then just invert. Wow, look at that. So, for some nice garnish, I got some raspberries. Thing in two or three? Put some mint. Oh, that looks pretty nice. Wow, okay. Before I cut into it, I gotta go take a picture of this for my, my thumbnail. But then I'll show you what it looks like to cut into it. But that's what it looks like. All right, so now I'm gonna cut into it. And look at that. That's that nice ganache liquid center. Wow, it's really, it's really red. That looks pretty great. Wow. Yeah, now put a scoop of ice cream on that or some whipped cream and you are ready to go. Wow, so thank you so much for watching this episode of Ben's Kitchen and thanks to my girlfriend Shai for being an awesome film person, camera woman, that's the name. Um, yeah, and this concludes the Valentine's Day special. This is a great dessert to make for your loved one or for yourself. Um, 
it's really nice it's actually pretty easy and it's quick and so yeah uh see you next time on ben's kitchen happy baking